Hello. In the last um, uh, video, we saw that um, the story of creation of Adam and Eve was simply a reflection of the understanding of the world by the people of the Bible. Essentially, Adam it was not um, a name of anybody but the name of a uh, man who was uh, supposedly made from uh, soil. But the reference to the God of creation, like I said, is a reflection, was a reflection of the understanding of deity of the people that wrote the story. So that God there is, a ref is God as they understood God. It's not necessarily a reflection of God, of everybody. And in this episode, I'm going to expand on that point. Because the God of the, the, God of the Bible that we know, and uh, which our people, Africans, are very, very devoted to, is Jehovah which is a corruption of the word Yahweh, which is um, God of the Jewish people, or the God of Israel. <clears throat> uh, the Bible makes no pretensions about it, and uh, but our people are so consumed by reference to Yahweh and the worship of Yahweh or Jehovah, uh, Jehovah this, Jehovah that, um, and they call upon this Jehovah to solve their problems, when in fact, this Jehovah isn't the God of Africa or the God that knows about Africa or linked to Africa or indeed any part of the world apart from the Jewish people that call on him. So, and I'm going to give you evidence from the Bible that this is uh, undoubtedly so. Now, the first um, evidence... Uh, you will see in the Bible, is that this God, Yahweh, identifies himself only as God of Israel. And the people of Israel identify this God as being only for them. <laughs> they do not pretend that this is the God of everybody. Exodus 3, Exodus, Exodus 3 is a story of how Yahweh, or Jehovah, called Moses to go and save his people from Egypt. So 13 to 15 says that Moses now asked God, Yahweh, when I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors, sent me to you. They will ask me, what is his name? So what can I tell them is your name? Sir. <laughs> I will answer as Moses. I am who I am. You must tell them the one who is called I am has sent me to you. Tell the Israelites that I, Yahweh, the God of their ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob have sent you to them. This is my name forever. This is what all future generations of you are to call me. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. As you well know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are the ancestors of uh, Israel according to the understanding and story of the Israelites. He didn't say, tell him or tell the people, the God of the universe, <laughs> the maker of heaven and earth and of everything in it. No, no, no. God of Isaac, God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And that is the, uh, the name Moses took to Egypt to tell them Exodus 20, verse 1. 20, verse 1 says, 
That's after the people of Israel have supposedly come out of Egypt. So this God, Yahweh, now gave them some decrees. And he says, I am Yahweh, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Your God, the God of Israel, <laughs> not the God of anybody else. I brought you out of that Egypt. Those Egyptians are not my people. I am not their God. All right. So he made it clear from the very beginning whom he was and that he was only the God, the God of Israel. Now, because Yahweh is the God of Israel and the people of Israel understood that he was their God only, they recount how this Yahweh goes into battles with them and for them against other people and their gods. Therefore, the Bible calls Jehovah or Yahweh a man of war. Fighting who? Terrorizing other nations <laughs> and their gods and fighting with the people of Israel against other nations and their gods. This is a theme all through the Hebrew Bible. Jehovah, man of war, fighting. They call him the God, Lord of hosts. Host refers to army. God of armies, you know, commander of the armies of Israel. And that was why, Bible tells us, he killed, he asked, he followed the Israelites to destroy Canaan and the people of Canaan from Jericho to Ai to all other places. He fought with them to destroy these places. This is the story the Bible tells itself. Exodus 3, 7-8 Exodus 3, 7-8 says, and this is Yahweh speaking to Moses, And so I have come to rescue them from the Egyptians and to bring them out of Egypt. I've heard about their suffering. I've come to rescue them. And I'm going to take them to a spacious land, rich and fertile, in which the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites now live. I'm going to destroy those people. <laughs> and I'll give them I'll give you their land. And that tells you that he was only interested in the people of Israel because he was only their God. The people of Canaan have their own gods and as far as Yahweh is concerned, I am he was fighting the gods of those other lands and showing himself to be superior. Now to confirm that Yahweh was the God only of the people of Israel and not the people of other places, Genesis 15, 18 to 20 says that this Yahweh or Jehovah made a covenant with Abram or Abraham and his descendants. On that day, Yahweh made a covenant with Abraham and said to him, To your descendants I give this land, from the wadi of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates, the land of the Kenites, the Kenizzites, Kadmonites, Hittites, Perizzites, Raphites, Amorites, Canaanites, Gagashites, and Jebusites. He was making a covenant not with the people of Canaan or the people of Africa 
or the people of the Americas or the people of anywhere else apart from the people who are descended from Abraham who was supposedly the ancestor of the people of Israel. To further cement this situation that Yahweh is only for the Jews, for the people of Israel, and made covenants only with them, he also gave his law. <laughs> the law in the Torah, the laws in the Hebrew Bible, the laws from Genesis uh, to Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, all these, all these laws were handed down to Moses for the people of Israel. There's no pretensions about it. And he now promised, if you go to Deuteronomy 28, he promised the people of Israel that if they kept his commandments, if they kept his ordinances, if they kept his decrees and laws, he would bless them with all manner of imaginable blessings and prosper their nation with all manner of prosperity and goodness. But if they disobey, <laughs> if they fail to follow his decrees, he would deal with them so bastardly and so badly with all kinds of evil that they could imagine. And these people swore that they were going to obey the laws of Yahweh through Moses. These laws were not given to any other people but apart from the people of Israel. Now, if you are still in doubt as to whether what I'm saying is correct or not, <laughs> the Bible goes further to make it clear. So from the covenant to Abraham, we move to the Torah, the laws given to Moses for the Israelites, and then from there we move to the prophets. The prophets of the Hebrew, of the Bible, we are all prophets of Israel. They were all Israelites. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Nehemiah, Zephaniah, Micah, Malachi, Hosea, Amos, and so on. All of them, bar none, were Israelites. There is no other place, if there's any other one, let me know. There's no other one, no other pro there's no prophet from anywhere in the world apart from Israel in the Bible. Is there a prophet from Arabia or prophet from uh, Africa or from the Americas or even from Europe or from anywhere else? <laughs> it's all Jewish, Israeli prophets. And that tells you that this is the God of Israel speaking to people of Israel through the people of Israel. And all their prophecies were directed, all their messages were directed at the people of Israel only. All of them, bad none. Let me give you a few samplings of the beginnings of the, prophet, of the books of the prophets. Isaiah 1 verse 1. Isaiah 1.1 1, 1 says, This is the vision concerning Judah <laughs> and Jerusalem that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Vision about Judah and Jerusalem to Isaiah, an Israelite guy, the son of an Israelite guy, in the reign of the kings of Judah. <laughs> Jeremiah, one, Jeremiah 2, 1 to 2. Jeremiah 2, 1 to 2. The word of Yahweh came to me, or if you like, the word of the Lord came to me. The Lord refers to Yahweh. Go and proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says. He didn't say, go and proclaim to the hearing of the world or hearing of Africa. 
this is what no Ezekiel 2 3 to 4 Ezekiel 2 3 to 4 he i.e. Yahweh said son of man I am sending you to the Israelites to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me they and their ancestors have been in revolt against me to this very day the people to whom i am sending you are this are obstinate and stubborn say to them this is what the sovereign lord says so the people of israel stubborn obstinate and the ancestors have been disobedient i'm sending you to them malachi this is the last prophet yeah so from the beginning to the last all the prophets were making messages to the people of israel isaiah 1 uh, sorry malachi 1 verse 1 a prophecy the word of Yahweh to Israel <laughs> through Malachi. All of them from A to Z were people of Israel giving messages to the people of Israel. Even Jesus, even Jesus, I shall come to that later in very big details, but even Jesus, who was supposed to be the son of Yahweh, was also sent to the lost ship of the house of Israel. He was sent to the Israelites, not to the world. Matthew 15, verse 24. Jesus was sent to the, to the ship of Israel, to the lost ship of Israel, not to the lost ship of any other, other people around the world. Now, if you are still in doubt <laughs> that Yahweh is only God for the Israelites, it's a local deity for the Jewish people. If you go to Deuteronomy 32, 8 to 9, I'm fond of this particular passage and I keep bringing it up. It says that the God of creation in Genesis, the one that made Adam and Eve, said that when the Most High, which is El, Elion, El was the God referred to in creation, appointed the nations when he divided humankind. He fixed the boundaries of the peoples according to the number of gods. <laughs> El Elion divided the nations according to the number of gods there were. Yahweh's own portion was his people. His people, the Israelites. Jacob, his allotted share. Jacob is the name for Israel. <laughs> Very clear, isn't it? Exodus 22 to 6. This Yahweh, whose people, whose portion of humanity is the Israelites, is now saying to them, You are my people. You must not have any other gods except me. You must not worship the other gods of other nations. You are mine, <laughs> and I'm yours. This is by no means peculiar, because in the ancient times, people saw themselves as being owned or beholden to particular deities who protected them and who fought with them against other nations and their deities. That is what was obtainable then. And the Bible makes it clear throughout the Hebrew Bible, that this Yahweh is jealous of other gods. Very jealous. Jealousy of Yahweh is a constant theme in the Hebrew Bible. And every time 
the Israelites go into trouble, they attribute it to their followership of or worshipping of other gods. There was jealousy and anger with the Israelites. Or there is anger when they worship other gods. It was it's a constant refrain in the battle. To the extent that when the nation of Israel was destroyed and um, deported, it was attributed by the Bible to their worshipping of other gods. So it's never in doubt that other nations have their gods and the people of Israel belonged only to Yahweh. So when you call Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Elo, whatever Jehovah you are calling, be it known to you, <laughs> you are calling the God of Israel. Who doesn't know you? From Adam, <laughs> if I may use that poem, <laughs> he doesn't know you at all. And as an African person, it's uh, rather sad that uh, we Africans are constantly shouting the name of the God of Israel. Proudly, God of Israel, help me. God of Israel, fight for me. God of Israel cannot fight for you. He will fight for the people of Israel. <laughs> Go back and find your own gods. <laughs> the Bible says so. Find your own gods. The Jews hold on to theirs, their own deity, their ancestry, their own worship system, the Indians, the Arabs, the Japanese, Chinese, etc. Only Africans are fond of shouting <laughs> Jehovah this, Jehovah that, Jehovah Jira, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rafa. <laughs> Jehovah doesn't know Africans, I'm sorry to say. And of course, if you look at the state of things in our continent, we've been calling that Jehovah for centuries. Does he hear us? He doesn't bother about us. doesn't care. <laughs> right, if you enjoy the video, if you like it, and you'd like to hear more and see more, please subscribe and uh, give us a thumbs up and um, give us a comment. If you think what you are saying is not true, let us know <laughs> why it is not true. Until I see you next time. Have a good time. Bye-bye.